This is FinTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices in life and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about those parts which are sometimes buried in the shade or swept under the rug of history. After watching 14 episodes of Ken Burns' The Vietnam War, I felt it important not only to talk about the war and the film and to have a totally different point of view. Our guest today is the son of the first Marine killed in action in Vietnam. He died February 16, 1964 a U.S. Marine in Vietnam. The advisory combat assistant era, which ran from 1954 to 1964, and I know most of you say, well, were we in the war in 1954? Yes. Nowhere in the film did we get to see the children of the American troops in Vietnam. The President of the United States of America takes pride in presenting the Navy Cross posthumously to Major, then Captain, Donald Edward, Edward Kelper, United States Marine Corps, for the extraordinary heroism in connection with the bombing of the capital of Kim Du Theater in Saigon. On the evening, February 16, 1964, while serving as an advisor attached to the 4th Vietnamese Marine Corps Infantry Battalion. Upon becoming aware of the bomb being placed in the lobby of the theater, Major Culper, who was standing nearby with a companion, unhesitatingly entered the main area of the theater, shouted to the occupants, United States servicemen and their dependents to take cover. This warning provided the time for numerous unsuspecting individuals to obtain cover by laying between the rows of the seats. Second later, the bomb exploded, fatally wounding Major Kelper and another person, and approximately 50 others. Though his prompt and courageous action in warning the theater patrons of the imminent explosion Major Kelper undoubtedly saved many, many seriously injured and possible death. His self-sacrificing efforts were in keeping with the highest tradition of the United States Naval Service. Our guest today is Donald Edward Kel Kelper. <laughs> he's a consultant to nonprofits. He's a grant writer. He's Region 1, Democratic Party, Oahu County. And my dear, dear friend, aloha, Donald. Aloha. Thank you for having me. Donald, I want to talk about you and your father, okay. but especially growing up as a child in, in that environment where Vietnam, the men serving in Vietnam, were looked down and called all kind of names, and it was not a really nice time to be a child, the son of a hero. Yeah. yeah. So it was a well. I was young when my father was killed, uh, and it. I, I think the best that I could say, um, starting out here, for for people to kind of give you some perspective on how pervasive the effects of the Vietnam War, <coughs> excuse me, on American society, is that if you look at the Vietnam Memorial and you look at the fifty-eight thousand plus names on that wall, all of which but eight are men. Um, 
consider that for each one of those young men whose name is listed on that wall, uh, they left behind uh, parents, siblings, in many instances grandparents. Um, a number of them, like my father, were married, had children. Uh, and when you consider that, and then you see the magnitude of the ripple effect of, of what the Vietnam War did to this country in terms of uh, collateral damage. The, uh, you know, my father's death altered our family's trajectory. Of course. Um, we can speculate, you know, some of you wonder, it's like, well, what would have happened had he lived and what whatever if? and come yeah. home? <laughs> but, you know, he didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, our, you know, we, part of the reason why I ended up being out here in Hawaii, you know, was due to that. Um, it affected, it had negative repercussions on a lot of, uh, my family. Um, I won't. I don't want to get into it too personally on there because there were some things I just really don't okay. even want to talk about. So where but were you born? I was born in Pasadena, California. So then when your father was transferred out here, your family moved out? Is that? My father was actually, we were stationed in Quantico, Virginia at the time with the Marine Corps. Uh, you know, it's a base training area south of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, he, my, to give a little bit of a background, my father was uh, one of the founding officers of what is known today as Force Recon, uh, the Marine Corps' reconnaissance battalions. Um, he was the founder of the Pathfinders. Uh, he was a counterinsurgency he was considered a counterinsurgency expert uh, and an expert on, you know, I mean, he, he worked with other, uh, you know, training other people, including, you know, other soldiers of other countries in survival techniques and being out behind mm. people's lines because that's what they did. Um, he was, we were in, um, he was stationed at Camp Pendleton, California when I was born and then immediately after that he was transferred with a number of people when they formed the 2nd Marine Reconnaissance Battalion in, uh, on the East Coast in Camp Lejeune. So he was moved out there and uh, he was, uh, you know, and then after that we were moved up to uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, where he was served, uh, you know, uh, in the Pentagon mm -hmm. for a while, but he had always wanted to be back out in the field. He was considered, you know, a counterinsurgency expert. Um, you know, he was involved in a number of, I think, ultimately dubious enterprises on behalf of the United States. Uh, in 1960, he was sent to the Congo, the Belgian Congo, on on the you know, which was then uh, declaring its independence from. Belgium, Belgium. Mm -hmm. but you know what happened was uh, in the Congo was that Belgium still desired to retain its influence and he was sent down there with Belgian troops and it was like a UN intervention in the area when uh, during the, the so-called Katanga rebellion and when P Patrice Lumumba yeah, was uh, became prime minister and was considered a communist for whatever reason <laughs> even though he really wasn't but we intervened uh, Lumumba was killed mm -hmm. and uh, was the guy uh, Mobutu yes was put in power uh, who was basically a Belgian puppet and he stayed there till 1998 so I mean the repercussions that we had from these things that were you know and this is kind of the for the the precursor and kind of parallel to what our experience in Vietnam ultimately became because we looked at everything through the war prism of a, of, of a Cold War perspective in which they were either communists or they weren't. And it never occurred to us to look at it through 
the lens of or through th from the perspective of of people who were trying to break away from colonialism uh, and in both instances in the Congo and then later in Vietnam we intervened in you know we, we tried to impede a nationalist movement thinking that oh well the communists were there and it's like without ever considering that for some of these people yeah they may have been called themselves communists but the Communist Party was a means to an end, which was independence for their yes. country. Well, we see that because the Americans decided to d divvy up North and South Vietnam, yeah. North and South Korea, yeah. and all of them wanted an independence for themselves. Yeah, and we, and we, we didn't did get we, that. We, yeah, we, we did that at the end of World War II because we made we made decisions that we were going to, uh, um, you know. It, we made decisions on the basis of, of, of occupation and, and in the aftermath of the vacuum of the Japanese withdrawal at the end of World War II without, again, considering the repercussions yes. of what happened. You know, so, yeah, first of all, Korea got divided and we got into war over there, over that. And the second one with Vietnam, we, in the aftermath of the French, French defeat yes. at Dien Bien Phu in 1954, um, and the French withdrawal, uh, the country was to be temporarily divided pending national elections and reunification. Mm -hmm. And we, we prevented that because for whatever our reasons, we, we feared that Ho Chi Minh was going to be elected, which undoubtedly he probably would have been elected had, yeah. had, had free elections been allowed to occur. But what happened was, is we, we set up a puppet regime in South Vietnam. Initially, for a short period, it was under an emperor, a guy named Bao Dai, who was quickly dis deposed. Can we yeah. go to break? Uh -huh. and, um, Donald, can we, when you come back, let's talk about what happened immediately after that. Okay. Okay? We're, we're, we'll yeah. be right back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Guys, don't forget to check me out right here, The Prince of Investing. I'm your host, Prince Day. Each and every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Hawaii time, I'm going to be right here. Stop by and hear from some of the best investment minds across the globe. And real estate, finances, stocks, hedge funds managers, all of that great stuff. Thank you. Hello, and we're back with Donald Kelper, who is the son of a Vietnam hero. And we're talking all about Vietnam, about Donald growing up without a father. But let's talk about the war itself, about, well, let, let me say what I know. I was in high school the day the DNBN Fu fell. And in those days, we taught history and geography separately. So we had this great teacher that taught us all about the French being in Indochina for a hundred years and how the French, the people of Vietnam wanted the French to go home. After World War II, the French came back and the Vietnamese said, no, 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 you all go home. And the first item on the agenda for the new UN was the Vietnamese asking that the French go home. And apparently that message did not get anyway. No, yeah, so it didn't didn't go anywhere. So the French are there. Then the French fall at Dien Bien Phu on in nineteen fifty four and the Americans swoop in and the rest is history. Yeah. What happened was in nineteen fifty four and the you know, with the French withdrawal there was, you know, as I said they temporarily divided the country. 
um, South Vietnam was basically a an artificial construct. Mm -hmm. um, we need to recognize that. Um, it's important for us to, when we assess our own Vietnam experience, to understand that the war, that the government in South Vietnam never enjoyed popular support. It was propped up primarily through U.S. dollars and U.S. and U.S. material support, and eventually U.S. military support. Uh, as as our own involvement in Vietnam escalated. Uh, my father was sent over there uh, in 1963 at a time, this was right after uh, um, uh, there was a, um, a battle north of Saigon in which the, the, the South Vietnamese army did not fare well in there and, and the uh, um, the worry was that South Vietnam would fall to the communists, so we upped our own escalation in terms of putting in more advisors in through the Military Assistance Group Vietnam, known as MACV. Uh, my father was sent over there as part of that. It was The majority of it was Army advisors, but there were a handful of Marine advisors, and my father was one of them because he was considered a counterinsurgency expert. Um, unfortunately, he was over there at a time of serious political instability in Vietnam uh, because uh, President Diem, you know, Diem, Diem was, a, uh, was a Catholic ruling over a country that was primarily Buddhist. Well, the Catholic, and he Catholic he, and let's he, say that just yeah. as a, a you know, period here, we have the Catholics came from the French. Yeah, yeah. And the rest of the country were Buddhist. Yeah, but I mean, that was, you know, that's the, the Catholic legacy of that. And there were, you know, about t 10 to 15 percent of the Vietnamese were and still are Catholic, uh, but the majority are Buddhist. But the thing was, is he discriminated against the Buddhists. He, he you know, and the Buddhists naturally rebelled. And that was like where we see the famous scenes on film of like which, what Ken Burns showed in the movie of Buddhist monks setting themselves right. on fire. And then there were a lot of street demonstrations. President Diem's regime was becoming increasingly unstable. The Viet Cong were becoming increasingly emboldened. And in the decision was made in Washington in late October uh, that Diem had to go. And President Kennedy at the time acquiesced, saying, okay, you know, Vietnam uh, needs, needs stable leadership, how they thought they were going to stabilize it by overthrowing the president. I don't know, but they acquiesced to what was a military coup. And when you mention about my father's being part of the, you know, being the chief advisor to the 4th Vietnamese Marine Battalion, it was the 4th Vietnamese Marine Battalion on November 2nd which came into Saigon, and my father brought them into Saigon, uh, positioned them around the presidential palace, and then he withdrew to the American embassy as the battalion and other units uh, assaulted the presidential palace and ultimately killed Diem. Um, this was done so, yeah, Americans wouldn't have their hands on this. I think what we learned from the Burns film was that Kennedy himself, and certainly Johnson, Johnson opposed the overthrow of Diem. Kennedy came to lament it, I think simply because the guy was killed. But, so here you were, we had this vacuum. And at this time, my father was becoming, my father was appalled. Uh, my father, and this is early in the war, you know, realize um, my father, when you look at 58,000 people dead, you know, in the war, my father was the 215th man killed out of 58,000. So this is very early. My father was writing back and was issuing reports saying, we really shouldn't be here. Uh, he was writing back home to my mother and to his parents at the time, expressing his foreboding about what was happening and, and you, know, you know, sharing his own views that we shouldn't be in Vietnam. Nevertheless, he, you know, being a soldier or being a Marine, he, you know, he, he did his duty. He, he continued to advise, advise his unit and then, ironically, in February 1964, he came back in from the field, uh, being out. He, they were basically operating the Mekong Delta area, so they came back into the field from the field, and he came back into Saigon to meet with friends, including his commander, and they were going to go out to dinner. 
then something came up in his commander, Joe Taylor, who said he, said he wished he would have turned it down, but he felt that he had to go to this meeting. So he, he, he called up my father and said, well, I can't meet you for dinner t tonight, you know? And he said, well, that's okay, I'll go to the movies. So he went to the Kindo Theater. And unbeknownst to him, and a lot of it, at the same time, the Kindo Theater had been targeted that night for a Viet Cong uh, terrorist raid in downtown Saigon, and this is in the American compound. Um, and uh, when he got there, uh, he had actually not been sexually standing in the lobby. He had been coming up and he was outside the theater when the uh, Viet Cong unit arrived. And they were, you know, they looked like any other civilians. Um, I think it would be important for me to note that two of the three members of this Viet Cong cell were teenage girls. One shot the American MP and killed him, who was guarding the theater, and then the, another ran in while another was holding the car. And uh, the other ran in and she had a 25 pound bomb, TNT. My father followed her into the theater. Um, and at that point when he confronted her, she pulled the uh, uh, whatever, you know, and, and, and she dropped the bomb, which meant it was gonna go off. And so he raced up stairs up into the theater itself and yelled, told everybody to get down. There was a bomb, then it went off. Uh, he was, he was killed instantly. I mean, I'm thankful for that. Uh, I think there were a lot of details that were left out that it was, you know, he was, he, it was, his commanding officer had to identify him. And I did talk with him before he died and, 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 and he said, yeah, he says it was, you know, it was, it was pretty horrific. Uh, but afterward, um, we were notified as ironically, um, for our family and for a number of our relatives, like my mother's relatives in California, because we were back in Pasadena at the time while my father was there, um, they learned about my father's death through the media. Oh dear. Oh. And it was... I oh, mean, that's not they were that's they not were, true I mean, at all. My mother, no. was, my mother was notified, I mean, in, in the proper way, because uh, we were at my grandparents. Um, the manner of what happened, because the Kindo Theater was a big event at the right. time, and uh, so it was in the front pages of a lot of the papers, because three Americans did die in that, 51 were wounded, uh, but everybody else was saved. The, the theater was full of almost 300 people. Mm -hmm. um, they're, you know, they... My father was buried with honors in Arlington National Cemetery. His body was brought back home, and we all went back to the, you know, the cemetery and everything. Uh, I think a really telling thing was like where you saw like the precursor to Vietnam, and I just, you know, this is these are anecdotal stuff, admittedly from me, but from my family, was um, my my paternal grandparents, my dad's parents, from Northbrook, Illinois, uh, Rudy and Loretta Kelper. Uh, were back obviously for the funeral and everything and afterward they uh, and my mother met with uh, you know a number of high-ranking people the commandant in the Marine Corps Wallace Green and the vice president at, or not there actually there wasn't a vice president at the time because it was a speaker of the house yeah. uh, but um, met with the acting you know was I forget who it was that was back then and then um, representatives of the president but also too is they met with uh, Senator Everett Dirksen uh, Senator, uh, from Illinois, which is my father's uh, home state. My father was also the first Marine from Illinois to be killed in the war. Uh, or, or, you know, and the first, actually the first person from Illinois and the first person from the Chicago area to be killed in the war. And so they met with Senator Dirksen and Senator Dirksen, from what I heard from my mother and a couple other relatives, uh, like my uncles, was that, um, that Senator Dirksen was saying, well, you know, your son, you know, we honor his service and stuff like that. And then my grandmother interrupted him and said, you know what, cut the bull, deep. Uh, my son is dead and I want to know why. Why are we over there? And this is in February 1964. So, I mean, and there were people that were... The people were asking questions then. And we're still asking that question. Yeah, and, and it was, you know... 
This was a precursor to where, you know, eventually things escalated. We ended up with the Gulf of Tonkin inc incident uh, six months later and the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, oh, which, yeah. which was, an, you know, and I think what we need farce. to recognize yes. is that at each point in this thing on here, President Johnson did not, was not in favor of intervention in Vietnam, but he got handed, you know, because Kennedy had been assassinated, so he got handed a well, thing, and, and he, you know, I mean, but he went against his own instincts. Yeah, that and every, showed, yes, that showed. Yeah, in each and every point. And, and you know, um, for me, because of all the things he had done with the civil rights and yeah. the voting rights and the, all this, the great society, he could have been one of the great presidents had he not been involved in that war. We are just about out of time, yeah. but I want to know if you will come back because the sure. war went on for a long time. There's a lot to talk about. I think there's, there's things that we should, should be, talking be talking about. about. And I think, you know, not just to talk about myself, but, I, you know, that's not what I would like to address is, like, where do we go from okay. here? Okay. Uh, where does the country, what kind of lessons do, should we with, with draw from our Vietnam experience? So that's a date. We have a date. You will come back yes, and we'll so talk certainly. some more. Okay. Thank you. This has been a pleasure spending the time with my dear friend, Donald Kelper, and I thank you. We will see you again next week. Aloha.